Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob with a new narration series. This time for the side story that is currently live as I'm recording this. For the Silver Ash family and uh, everything that comes along with it. <laughs> oh boy. Do they have problems in their little part of the world? But yes, this is gonna be a narration done by me and obviously character voicing for the uh, Break the Ice side story that is currently live in Ark Knights. And uh, oh boy is it dense with text, but oh boy am I also happy that <sighs> for once th there's a, there's a uh, healthy mix between male and female characters considering I won't have to do a, like currently for the main campaign that I'm doing, uh, 75% high-pitched female voices and the rest is like a mixture of side male characters that appear here and there. Ugh. That was that was horrible on the vocal cords. But uh, how about we go into this? So I will be I will be obviously splitting this into parts. I am not gonna do this entire thing in one go as the title of the video is probably suggesting. Uh, this very video will feature uh, the story for stage one, the cutscene for in between stage one and two, and stage two. And oh god, judging by the test earlier, well, test recording, just test run rather. This is gonna be a beefy video already. I know that. <clears throat> so, how about we begin? First off, let me boost the volume on the. Uh, on the game itself, considering that the music in the background usually is very, very low. So, <clears throat> let's begin. So, stage one story. Title starting on a sour note. And let's begin with the before story. <clears throat> External force. A minute touch of force from outside with just the lightest push. An avalanche will bury the whole of Kerak, conspiracies, machinations, and all. Um, Kerak just reminded me. I wanted to say something before we begin as well. Uh, there are very a lot of <clears throat> non-English names and titles and stuff that is. Uh, vaguely proposed to be like a Finnish, Swedish uh, stuff from the Ural Mountains, that proposed region, considering this whole region is supposed to be like a mixture of that region of Europe. <clears throat> so, uh, excuse some pronunciations, I will try... <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll try to be as... Uh, Accurate as possible, I guess, considering some of the words are thought up. Besides one that I that I know exists and they pulled from actual actual folklore, um, but in other news stuff stuff like, for example, Silver Ash's real name. Um, I know that the name is a uh, just a amalgamation of the Latin name for Snow Leopard. Which, I, if I remember right, is Panthera Entia, or Entia, whatever. Uh, which led me to believe that it's supposed to be then, considering it begins with the E-N, it's supposed to be Enchiodas. En Enchiodas, but... Just for the purposes of this, I will pronounce his name as Enciodas, purely because of one thing the three Silver Ash siblings being all named with the letter E first, which we have Big Brother Enciodas, uh, Middle Sister Enya, and the Little Sister Encia. And I kind of love that the first, the oldest sibling and the youngest sibling <laughs> both sound very similar in name, at least the beginning part of the name. Very cute. I love it. I love the detail. Anyway, just wanted to point it out. I will pronounce his name as Enciodas. Well, honestly, I don't care. I'm going to pronounce it as Enciodas. If it's supposed to be Enciodas, 
fine that's it <laughs> that's all i get all i'm gonna say here <clears throat> anyway back back to the narration Sir, this is just a shoddy plank of wood. What makes it sell for 50 whole pounds? Now, sir, you will want to learn something new today. This is no ordinary piece of wood. It's a blessing of Kiaragandr, goddess of the snow realm. It's all thanks to her protection that Kiarag could be free from the catastrophes and set down roots here. And the stuff that made his charm come from the evergreen trees of Mount Jungfrau, our own second highest peak in all of Kiarag. Do you know much about Jungfrau? Legends say it's a mountain formed from the tears of Kiaragandr as they fell and froze. The trees wa uh, watered in, the, in that snow from on high grow full with Kiaragandr's love and favor for this land, and charms made from their timber assure your safety and warding of calamity where you may go. Seeing as it's your first time here in Kiarag, why not take some souvenirs for your home folk back in Victoria? What gives you that idea? Listen, these last two years, Mr. Ancionis has had more than more and more of these big corporate what's it flocking in. I heard your accent and I knew straight away. The new people like you see, I recommend these charms in particular to make uh, to mark the occasion. Heard of the Chiketti, maybe? They're people eating beasts deep in our mountains, sinister to the eye, inhuman. They're gone again when you least expect. But so long as you're bearing the charm, blessed by the Winebear Court, you'll cover those things under Kiragandr's might, and they won't harm you. And just think, you take it back to your family and tell them, this charm bears the divine protection of Kierag's mount Karlan. Paints the complete picture, doesn't it? You've tripped halfway across the land to Kierag. You wouldn't go back to your own without something nice for it, would you? Hmm. Ah, fine. I'll take one, and one for my wife and li uh, little tot each. That's the ticket. If only we could all be straightforward as you. Let me see. Sorry, this wood must have been stripped from any random mountain tree. Uh, what gives you the right to say that? First, without approval from the Pale Roaches, no one's even allowed to climb Jungfrau. Second, I sure didn't hear about anyone climbing here uh, uh, here while I was gone. When I left Kierak, I was told... Uh, I, I even told Vice, if anyone makes it up, he up her, be sure to send me a message. How do you know who? Wait a minute, the tail. You can't be Miss Encia. Uh, Encia, you... You're Mr. Ancionis' sister. Uh-huh. Now, hold it, sir. Were you actually trying to swindle me? Well... <laughs> they said Miss Encia loved climbing ever since she was little. Seems she knows more about the snow caves than us commoners, after all. All these bears of mine come from the hunters in the mountains, actually. They must have been the ones swindling me, no doubt. I'll be going to find them and settle our score. As for this charm, uh, Miss Encia, would you mind? It's true it has the Vinebear Court's blessing. No man of Kierag would dare to forge seals and offend Kiaragandr. If you want to ward off any rumored chigetis with it, forget it. But if you think it back as a souvenir, I think it will work great. So just slash the price a little. Oof. In light of that, I'll put them at ten pounds a piece. Now, sir, are you still buying? If the sister of Mr. Anciota says as much, I've got no reason to be skeptical. Business for you must be tough. I'll take five of them. Coming right up. Are you here to buy anything, Miss Encia? Whatever you fancy, it's yours. My business owns uh, itself to the silver ashes, after all. No, no, I'll pay you like normal. Right, Doctor. Well, luckily we prepared enough. Victorian Casimir's cash. 
Jeez, we could exchange all we want, but it's still only worth anything in our famous region. And this trade port's doing the hottest business anywhere in our land. You may as well spend all that money right here. You'll still get away with it. Lady Ancia, we should be on our way to the station by now. Oh! Uh, we're tight on time. Doctor, let's go! The blizzard is coming. Take caution, outsider. And, uh, you are? If you don't want to freeze, leaving now will still have your skin. Um... What are you planking for, Doctor? Um, someone was talking to me. Huh? There is nobody here, though. Um. It's far from the right season for leisurely outdoor coffee. You look behind you and only see the bright canopy blocking the sun, and a sign advertising Carlan trade. A deserted terrace sits silent, just like the distant peaks of pure white. Maybe it was the pages of the magazine on the table, rustling in the wind, that gave you the illusion someone was sitting next to you, talking with you. Doctor, step out of it, let's move! Hmm. We'll meet again. <clears throat> Matterhorn, we're here. The, ma the master is waiting for you. Good to see you, Vice. Are you going? I was going to, but the master wants to invite the doctor to the Tree Clan Council with him. And have me stay back to greet them in your place. After all, I'm an employee of Rhodes Island myself. I think he must be ready for a vacation after guarding the young lady for so long. Besides, given you out here, I'm guessing the uh, she ditched you. <laughs> yes, she is shopping with the doctor right now. She wanted a vacation f for me too, so she had me let her free. That's the master and the young lady for you. Well, how do you feel being back this time? The territory's been fast with construction and he huge in its overall change. It's almost unrecognizable already. That's the master for you indeed. I'll take the two of them up on their great kindness and visit home for now. See my parents and then I'll be on my standby at the masters. How about you? Me? You've been away for a while too. Last time we met, weren't you off with the master to Columbia? I've got nothing pressing. Savoring the streets again is more than enough for me. What about an old Itra friend of yours? Monk, I think, was her, was the name. Eat a bit with him if you have the time. That's... We'll see, I guess. <clears throat> it's me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Brilliant. It looks like... The base station signal is fine. Hmm. How are you? I found a few suitable hiding spots for the comm station installation, but no matter where we install the uh, install a station in Turicum, we won't be able to catch all of Kierag. This is Kierag's southern, southern gateway, and particularly its only contact channel with the outside. Setting up a comms network here has massive importance. But if you want to cover the whole of Kierag, setting up a few more simple stations around the Central Lake region would be the best option. That's not what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Did you have me wandering outside so I could scope things for us? What I mean is, you haven't been back in Kierag for a long time. How do you feel? Oh. Honestly, it feels totally unbelievable. When I left Kiara on the Silver Ashes talent fostering program, it was for here to, uh, from here too. Back then, even Turicum was just an ordinary little village, let alone the rail station at the border now. I never thought it'd become so big at this point, 
I think you could argue it stands up to the cities on the outside. Doing construction work like this is in the snowy mountains must be harder than I could ever imagine. Good. Where are you? Uh, where are you all? <coughs> what the hell? I think this is a typo. Uh, oh. Where are you right now, Captain? I'll come find you. We're boarding a train to Carlan. You don't need to come with me yet. Huh? You mentioned your home was in an industrial area in the mountains. Yep. For now, go back and visit. Nothing's more important than family. But... You're back in the mountains. It's the perfect opportunity to head home. The doctor thinks so too. Did the doctor say that? Um, hmm. I understand. If you're okay with it, then I will. So, the doctor... The doctor has me with. The train for the foot of Mount Carlin is about to depart. The train will depart soon. Please board now. I'm heading out. Have a good break, Aurora. A steam whistle and a faint announcement, the train departing for Carlin set slowly into motion. Doctor, let me tell you about the names of all these peaks. Look, the one there with the flat, flat -ish shape uh, slope is Jungfrau, the third saintess named that, that one. The really steep one there, that's Matterhorn, his name actually came straight from that one. Encia continues on with something to say about all this scenery that passes by, and all that Kierag is. Aside, Courier wears his eternal smile, listening to every word quietly and respectfully, but from time to time the faraway look in his eyes carries a hint of something unclear. Sharp rec reclines against the seat, browsing net pages. He'll find that he, he'll find that he, uh, that the contents of Kiarak's internet far exceed his expectations. Alternatively, you listen to Encia and cast your gaze out of the window. Outside, remnants of ice drift in a lake, reflecting the blue sky. Some locals are together at its shallows, some drawing water, some doing laundry, some laughing. The purest white snow peaks stand imposingly tall. Any attempts to lift your head and see their end blocked by the sunlight. Halfway up, where the mountains level somewhat, a young shepherd herds flocks of stock beasts home. No surprise crossing him as he sees the people aboard the train. Instead, he lift, lifts his whip waving at you in greeting. Not far away is the village where he lives, smoke spiraling from chimneys, peaceful and prosperous. The sight of it all wipes the cares from your mind. Perhaps this journey will be just fine. Just as a side note, I love that little tune that plays on the train. It's such a nice little tune. <clears throat> anyway, next part. <clears throat> it's taking too long. Keep it down, Skirius. You're interrupting my train of thought. What's to think about? And see what it says to hand his land over this time. Yucatan, your opinion? I agree with Russ. But Sir Enciodas won't just lie down and take it. At least you think before you talk, unlike your wife here. Oh, who exactly is this about? You, of course. 
my beautiful little sister. If only it wasn't for Arctos's and his idiot face firing off at anything to do with Carlin. I didn't want to fall out with Enciodas this soon, that's for sure. People like Enciodas are a handful. Even if he croaks, he'll be sure to put us in the ring too, at least. Not to mention... Something tells me he won't accept his sorry lot, and it's telling me aloud. <laughs> in my view, I said keep it down, Skiotus. If you really have something to say, you can go outside and tell, and then tell the mountains about it. Of course, I won't let you back indoors. <laughs> Fine, I'll just shut up then. <sighs> so happy to talk to yourself. <laughs> Sir Arctos arrives. <clears throat> At the summit of Carlin in winter, the frigid winds never rest, but the look in Arctos's eyes and the sound of his great axe as he drags along the ground in bursts comes to uh, come to full people. It's as if the winds are his to bring. Look who's here, Arctos, my friend. And Ciodus. Who am I to answer that? I thought you would have bumped into each other outside and settled everything there, and that way I wouldn't need to be tormented in here, and I could go happy home. How surprising that something uh, can even torment you, Ratatos. Of course, I've got torment to the nines. Such as more and more people in my territory wanting to work for a living in Enciodas's instead. Or Gulo, the most able officer you have, not showing up today. Why? He caught a cold. Kerak's sturdy a soldier catching a cold. That's a good omen. Looks like we'll need him, that man under Enciodas to give him some treatment. Gnosis, that one. He'll get better on his own. Fine, fine. No good deed of mine goes unpu unpunished. Seeing as you're here, it looks like we're just missing Enciodis now. The three o'clock chime has not yet sounded. I see I've kept the two of you waiting. Sir Enciodis and the Great Elder arrive. Huh? <laughs> There's a mystery. Why are the two of them together? Enciodes, don't tell me you went praying to the saintess before coming to this meeting. Far from it. I met the Great Elder along the way and had a few words with him. Great Elder, you first. A fine curtsy. The entrance to the hall slowly shuts, the air inside settling down in an instant after. The Great Elder sits straight in the middle. Arctos and Ratatos stand to one side, and Enciodas to the other. The gulf of difference is stark. Former Tree Clan Council always had us sit together, talking of the year's crop of affairs, of whose house had done more, and of whose required assistance after brights of snow. I had not foreseen such a topic at today's council. <sighs> you all want to really grind in Ciodas about that. No need for such aggression, Arctus. As the Great Elder said, the three clan councils should be, be no place for us to blame and reproach each other. I wonder if you've heard one about the plot and the cattle and Ciodas. Enough, enough. Give me, given we are all here, we shall commence this meeting of the Tree Clan Council. Bye, Kiaragander. Bye, Kiaragander. I presume all three are aware of the purpose of this council. On Mr. Arctos and Miss Ratatos' proposal last meeting that the Silver Ashes would cede governing authority over the valleys and mining regions for the Pale Roaches and Brown Tails to then administrate. 
In addition, the Silver Ash has withdrawal from the Parliament of the Three Council, Three Clan Council. Gnosis Elwise has been expelled from his post by myself. I believe both of you know this already. What good does knowing that do? Gnosis is your aid. How could his actions not have been according to your instruction? If you think p pinning the blame on him will let you escape punishment, then think again. Arctos, why come to such an arbitrary conclusion? Enciodas, there is much I ca can't tolerate from you. You can open your factories in your territory, do your business, recruit, recruit your foreigners. That is your territory. Whatever ghoulish form or twist, uh, twist it into, it's not my concern. But never should you have let your railroad to Carlan, bringing the copper stench onto holy earth, and you're mining up the Carlan's foot and extracting resources in secret is beyond the pale. What do you take the ground of Carlin for? What do you take the land of Keragander for? You even plotted against any inspection team so that they wouldn't investigate your factories. My subordinates all still bedbound for it. Is that what you want to say? That these are all the doings of that accursed Edelweiss and nothing to do with you? Gnosis was once my most trusted partner, and I mistakenly gave him too much power. For that, I am deeply, deeply regretful. What of you, Ratatos? Is there really no leeway to reverse course between us? <sighs> I really would love to help you, Anciotis. After all, six whole years ago, it was me who paved your way back into this hall. Of course, it hurts, pushing you out of again by my own hands. But in the end, when it comes, uh, when, when it's about all of Kierag, I just can't defend you. Though I believe the Brown Tails have benefited greatly from business in Turkum. Am I denying that? It's not just money in your pockets. We can reap the rewards with our subjects too. Who would be a fan of only sticks in the mud like Arctos? But even though people talk behind my back thanks to it, crying with, uh, witch about me, I still have a bottom line, Enciodus. I don't know what you re uh, read or learned in those four years you studied outside that drives you to abuse or trust to uh, trust to this point. I was wrong about you six years ago, Enciodus. I'll pay for that uh, in time, but you're going to pay first. Seating the valleys and mines under our jurisdiction, as well as the Silver Ashes seat at the Three Clan Council. These are your demands. Is it not an excessively high price? Carlin Trade has already stricken its then director in these affairs gnosis of its register. The company's growth policy has recently milled too. That much is plain to see. Too late, Enciodus. If this price wasn't high, how would you ever remember it? If you want to seek forgiveness, you never would have done any of this in the first place. But since you have done it already, then today, here and now, you must pay something for it. Are you handing over governments of the valleys and mines, or are you not? Are you ceding from the Three Clan Council, or are you not? Hmm. All I have done up to now was for the development of Kiarag. That it would worsen our relationship with the Pale Roaches and Brown Tails to this present extent was never my wish. And from the exchanges I've just had with the two of you, I see this worsening is already unavoidable and unredeemable. I somewhat foresaw it, but to arrive at this moment in reality, at this time of grievance and ultimatum in this hall, still fills me with sorrow. But I truly cannot bear to see a fissure arise in the three clans that govern Kierak together. Descent in the three clans signifies descent in Kierak. It significa signifies that Kieragander's people are soon to lose their collective homeland. And Ziodas, if you truly thought so, if you truly ever thought so for even one moment, you wouldn't have sent yourself packing from Kierak back to Victoria and being a very lass on Kerak herself. Arctos, I, Enciodas Silverash, am the head of the Silverashes. 
This means I must bear my responsibility for the future of Kiag, and fulfill what is obliged to me. I don't know what makes you feel I should have stayed in Victoria. Is it because those days of only two clans in Parliament made you feel so much more powerful? Not to mention, my reforms in the years I've led the Silver Ashes, Silver Ashes are a done reality. The people of my territory haven't just gained from the way of life I've brought, they've continued to advance such lives by their own accord. Even if I leave, the machines will still work, and the trains on the tracks will still set into motion. Or do you truly believe that if I had hand over the valleys and mines today, and seize operations in those factories and railroads, that the people working there, the people benefiting from what it produces, will accede? That's your problem to solve, Enciodis. No, Ratatos, maybe you have incredible trust in my problem-solving ability, but at base, this is not a problem I alone must face. You wouldn't suggest that the Brown Tails subjects have never profited any from these years column trade has done business. How many people have the Originium stoves kept going through the coldest winters, procured from Columbia by Carlin trade? There are no catastrophes in our mountains, but the ice and snow still claims lives. What is so disgraceful about the herders' pr prods or the fertilizer that comes from Victoria? You brought about this situation today, including your constant embellishment of yourself, and now you're using the same situation to menace us, shamelessly. Get it out, say this is all your accomplishment, say you're powerless to give those of Kierak self-sufficiency, and that you're not afraid to have them mocking you, you head of the Silver Ashes. Wrong, Ratatos. To menace is to is the bluff of one who lacks confidence, while I am only recounting the truth. You deem Carlan trade as a menace to Kerak. That in itself is a mockery beyond the heavens. <laughs> you've got some gall by the sound of it, Enciodus. And remember, you've been good at talking this sort of talk ever since you were young. Don't waste your breath, Enciodus. Today you will... Would I not hand it over today, General Gulo would have directly assumed control of the valleys, having been stationed close by long ago. You... Don't be so quick to resort to force, Arctos. I can make commitments and decisions according to your proposals. Conflict has been far from my intent up to now. As the head, I will not put up with any, uh, any losses either. But if it's for putting this grievous state of affairs in check for the alliance of the three clans of the Snow Mountains, then in the, in the capacity of Keragandar's people, the Silver Ashes can make concessions. I am fully able to offer the valleys and mines with both hands. You're serious? You can say a fine line. In Ciudas, there is no one here who will be taken in by your drivel. Hence why I, Arctos, don't rush. Impetuousness will be your weakness, guardian axe of Kiaragandar, most poised soldier of Kierak. I can accept these conditions you two have devised, but it will not be handed to the Pale Roaches, nor the Brown Tails. Then to whom do you give it? What? Kiaragandar? Completely correct, Arctos. Most faithfully of the people of Kiaragandar. Every inch of territory of the Silver Ashes and of you all too is fundamentally accorded to us by Kiaragandar's trust. We merely supervise it in Kiaragandar's place. Um, hold on, you can't be... It is as you imagine, Ratatos. I've decided I will hear your demands and give the Silver Ashes valleys and mines in whole to the Vine Bear Court for the to handle its factories and pits. What? So as to award conflict between the three clans, Kierak ought to have a leader who can hold the faith of both the three clans and the Snow Realm citizens at once. 
Though we've managed, I believe, that having the Vicar of Kiragundr take control of Kiarag once again, as in times past, is a fair and reasonable thing. I imagine that peacefully settling this issue, peacefully uh, partitioning the Silver Ashes assets, and peacefully avoiding a direct clash of the three families, is what we hope for by all rights. Rathatos, Arctos, I can give up my valley and mines on this one condition. What do you think? <clears throat> A spell of silence. The attendant, attending nobles look amongst each other, trying to comprehend what purpose lies within the birds. The only sound, the scratching of the transcriber's pen, but that freezes too a few short seconds later, hung in the atmosphere. The first to break the silence is a pencil as it carelessly clatters to the ground, alongside a stunned gasp from an unknown someone. Immediately, consciously, low murmurs, murmurs of discussion arise on one after another, as if a pan of thirsty in lowly heated oil. <coughs> hmm. Look, is that the man from uh, from the Edelweisses? That noses car has the nerve to show his face here. I spit on him. Good word, he's turned this way. Puh. See, see the, uh, the look in his eyes? Heavens knows why Mr. Enciodas ever gave him such great responsibility when his parents clearly plotted. T -t -t -t. Shush it now, you'll anger Kiaragander if you speak of these things atop Karlan. Though you have to admit, his happy days are at an end. Mr. Enciodas obviously couldn't tolerate his conduct one second longer. Really? Did Mr. Enciodas finally put him from his post. Yes, don't you know? At the council last month, he removed him from his office on the spot. He's already out then? That's wonderful. His number was long up. Hmm. Sir Gnosis, I've warned that we should not converse on these occasions. Yes, my apologies. Only... I received an urgent message. The train carrying Rhodes Island delegation is almost at Carlin's foot already. You had some interest in this company. Do you want to go and meet them? The Snow Realm has reached a major juncture. If their ex external force that uh, <clears throat> if their external forces that have been drawn in, then I'll naturally meet them when the time comes. No need to go out of my way. Besides, I'm merely an employee on probation now. What position do I have as pretext to meet them? Sir, it really was disappointing to see how Enzio acted, ejecting you as a figurehead just to appease the other two clans. Appease? Enzio thoughts are by no means as simple as that. I've heard Rhode Island really did succeed in slowing the exaberation of Enzio's aripathy. Yes. Hmm. Then they do, in fact, have the resources to win the Silver Ashes' favor. But the attention of Enciodas is both a blessing and a curse. No easy judgment yet. You mean... There is no extraneous meaning to what I said. Anyhow, presumably those in the company must have applauded and cheered the same way those two dilettants did just now, hearing I was gone. None of them understand your worth, Sir, Sir Gnosis. Using the word worth to describe a person implies that person can be weighted. Sir? By now, Enciodas should have proposed his idea for the Saintess to lead a tree clan council. The meeting hall and this moment should be utter chaos. Enciodas, in the end, this is the step you took after all. You're the one who understands Enciodas the most. One you can stand in the way of his ambitions. <clears throat> hmm. The wind's picked up. It's going to snow. 
A massive snowflake sticks against Gnosis' shoulder, only for the frigid wind to pitilessly immediately blow it off. Kiarak's snowstorms are far from rare. They only need the clouds to gather thick enough, waiting just for a turning point. And once the equilibrium of the air uh, that supported those clouds is smashed and loses its bracing power, Does Enciota seriously mean for these saints to become Kerak's queen? Impossible. This is Enciotas we're talking about. But he seems serious about those ideas he just spouted. No matter how you put it, think how incredibly it would be if Kerak could unite under the leadership. Keragander's land really should return to Keragander. The whispers amongst the bystanders come together, and momentarily the roar of the wind outside the window is covered by the voices. Enciodis, do you have any idea what you're saying? I'm clear as could be. Let us lay everything out in the open. I originally held that so long as results were had and the Silver Ashes sincerity was clear to you all, you would discard your prejudices and hand in and hand in hand with me get up forward. If the three clans could act together the of any differences in earnings. A country stance upon foreign trade versus a company stance upon foreign trade are completely divorced di <clears throat> divorced concepts and the results obtained will be worth apart. Maybe my pace was too fast and led you to believe instead I was planning to submissively hand care to outsiders. As if you weren't Enciodas, Carlin is not your th uh, theater to act in. Kiragander will punish you for every lie you've spewed. In that case, then Carl uh, that Carlin still permits me to stand here is my greatest proof. Leave it, leave it at that. I know full well I can't change your thinking, but I don't plan to alter Carlin trade policy because of your short-sightedness either. Carlin Trade values Kierags, mines and factories, but they aren't the totality of the company. Letting them bring the company into stasis is far less worth it to me. If we let, if we let an eye uh, for an eye go any further, then in the long run we'll have spent excessive energy on uniting our, our views, and it'll have given outside threats a chance to hijack. Like you, this is in no way what I want. Therefore, I ultimately resolve to hand over all executive, executive power to the Saintus. It will be for the Saintus to determine. I can accept, accept this agreement, and I believe all present can too. A heap of nonsense. Who would believe words like these from someone trampling on the faith of Kiragandar? <coughs> Trampling. I know that's how you see it. Many harbor prejudice towards the change Carlin Train has brought. But labor is the very foundation on which Kierag once was uh, once stood. Forget not that should they still have work at noon, the Brown Tails people pass on kneeling in your prayer to Carlin. And if things are busy. They certainly do not take the monthly visit to Carlin to hear the teachings. Huh, Encio, just pulling some half-fisted straw man like this isn't one bit persuasive. What's next? Are you going to say that everything you've done to Carlin is by Kiragander's console? Kiragander, page one, line one. Her tears are the ice eternally unmelting, her back the unbreaking mountain. Her breath, the cold wind of winter, her smile, the warm light of spring. When she awakes, shall the mountains summon her, and the sky cast down lustrous spectra. No one has ever said that the holy mount can truly stand for her. Mount Carlin's uniqueness is own to the vine bear court being situated on it. If you denounce me for 
harm of the Vine Bear Court's interests, I will readily concede that. Besides, I have brought my full good faith, and in addition, those who toil will hold power and those who idle will suffer. I have never gone against her teachings. Utter, utter tripe. The Weinberg Court is Kiragander's representative upon this land and the saintess of the Weinberg Court, her Terran speaker. How do you think you can change this with a mere few utterances? Great Elder, will the Weinberg Court suffer these wild lies? Naturally, I have to protest what Mr. Enciotis says. However, day in and day out, the scholars wage countless disputes over interpretations of her words. Then Weinbear Court is not a place to a place of outlaw descent by any means. Who is right Who is wrong? Far be it for you or me to have the final say, Arthurs. Page three, line five. In the beginning, Kierag had but one untamed settlement, so until she lifted her head from amidst the mountains. This time, the following Enciot following Enciotis start, some nobles present notably begin to recite alongside him. She became as human and lived in, s lived in survival with the untamed. Yet they feared her might and honored her as divine. More came to gather at her side, and so was Kerak born, and she, its first ruler. Under her guidance did Kerak flourish and thrive in bountifulness. Arctus, tell me, what does page 321, line 1 say? After she held the kingdom for three centuries, there came one sudden day when she passed the ruler's title to her helper and vanished amidst the blizzard. Henceforth, Kerak was given unto the people's hands. Everyone, we are all of Kerak and her people. It is exactly as I said before. If there is someone able to determine how we should proceed, then it is not I, nor you. No Ratatas. This someone must be her speaker, the Saintess. That we do not trust each other won't matter. The Saintess will determine for us and sh show us towards the future. Or do you mean to admit somehow that you don't trust the Saintess to make the fairest ruling? That you don't trust her speaker upon the land? <clears throat> In an instant, the attention of every noble there focuses onto Arctos. You! Enciotis, how dare you! Hmm. Enciotis, if you're hoping this level of provocation will rouse any reaction in us, then that's far too disappointing of you. Hmm. The Saintess was born a Silver Ash that we all know, but her character is equivalent common knowledge. Equiven equivalently common knowledge. She is still Kierak Sentis. From the moment she received the glory and duty of Kieragander, the people of Kierak have been witness to her every word and action. Her conduct has been impartial ever since she took up the title. As things stand, how can we be skeptical of her simply for her common birth? <laughs> it's like you just it's like you just said, Kieragander was broad of heart and resolved to give Kierak's future to her people. But you you, Enciotis, choosing only now, after all this time, to bring up Kiragander, expounding on her virtue and benevolence, is that not, <clears throat> is that not out of some ulterior motive, really? You are the one uh, disrespecting the saintess, Enciotis, coming in with sophistry to course the and take advantage of her people. There's a grave accusation. That's a grave ex accusation, Ratatos far graver than your criticism of Carlin trade. It seems our continu continuing this discussion further will only add to the maelstrom of conjecture. Given so, we may as well ask the saintess to come here, and we'll set things straight in front of her. <laughs> no objections. With all three clans gathered here, I expect there won't be any room for your tricks. Well then, in the interest of fairness, 
maybe trouble the great elder in her humble request of the saintess. So be it. I'll go and ask, ask her. Exercise patience, please. <clears throat> hmm. I think it might be snowing outside. What's so strange about that? The snow never stops falling on this mountain. Something's different. Hmm. So, Inciota's proposal for the three families had their uh, hand their power to me for me to decide Kierak's future. Indeed. What do you think of it, Enya? I... Well met, Great Elder. Enya, here you are. I imagine you've probably heard about the Assembly's affairs. If you mean the transfer of power, yes, I already know. There's been progress then, if you've come for me now. Key, okay, never since you were a little young one. It's reached the point of where the clan's view views clash like fire and water. Before this council con uh, convened, Silverash gave me a hint or two that under the current situation, the plan he suggested may well de-escalate. Hmm. It seems you don't approve of my actions, last council. The last council, after all, Great Elder. Enya. Oh, Enya. Come, child. Look outside. Don't you know the years it took for the frost and snow to finally cover these mountains? And could you know how many years had to pass for us to have this pure and holy summit where we stand? I understand. But... Her tears are the ice eternally unmelting, her back the unbreaking mountain, her breath the cold wind of winter, her smile the warm light of spring. If everything was Kiragandr's gift, then why must Kiragandr's people still fear the blizzard? Hmm. In that respect, you and him do seem alike, yet a different too. Um, pardon me? Nothing, just an old man thinking aloud. What you say is correct, Saintus. You spend all your time atop the summit, and the mountains have bowed to Kiaragander's speaker in turn. To think so is quite right. However, in snow this great, built up over so many years, how many of Kiaragander's people would be buried, should it ever collapse? Hmm. To me, Kierak's peace of mind has always come first and foremost. I trust, Saintus, that you are the same. Hmm, it's about time. The three are still in the hall awaiting you. You cannot appear too soon, but I wouldn't advise you to be late either. Now is the perfect time. May you both come this way, please. Alright. Kerak's peace of mind. Letting the snow, snow carry on building underfoot without a place for us to clear away. Will that be peace for Kerak? Hmm. Kerak under, I pray, watch over your people. The Saintus arrives. In the wake of the blizzard sweeping the mountain, the clear, sharp bell strokes come as if from the heavens of the ears of Geragandr's people. Where she passes, the noble fails to stand, offering the most formal etique, etiquette, chanting the most devout prayer. Frost and snow have fallen by your will to bring to Geragandr's blessings. Saintus, it's been long. With your litany of occupations, you've neglected worship, Sir Enciodus. It truly has been long. 
you requested an investigation of the valleys and mines prior to I could not, of course, neglect that. Once all this is settled and done with, I will personally lead a procession in worship to Carlan. Your faith in Kyavakandr is apparent throughout. Why be so elaborate in proving it? That's a fine jest, great Synthus. I hear a sister of yours has come back to Kyarak. You're well informed, Synthus. She should be on the path to Carlin with an honored guest at this very moment. A guest? Indeed. Upon this now, up till now, my sister has been receiving treatment at a medical firm called Rhode Island for her neuropathy. For the coming money, I've inv invited one of said firm's leaders to visit Kerak as a gesture of thanks. You care much for your sister, Sirentiodis. Truly, it is admirable. Hmm. You flatter me, Saintus. I presume you already know of my proposal. What do you think of it? What are Sir Arctus and Lady Ratatus' considerations? I, Arctus, would in Kyargandr, visible to all, say that let alone merely having the Saintus be the mediator of the three clans. Hold it, Arctus. I could hand my position as head to her, and what shame would it be? And you, Lady Ratatus? Who could possibly say no in this moment? Who would dare say no in this moment? Hmm. For the great Saintus to be the arbitrator of the three clans in this present situation is indeed the best option. Hmm. I understand. As the three clans' heads all submit to this and are willing to entrust themselves to me, I shall respond in kind to all, assume the duty of kind in Kyarag. Alright, and now on to the scene in between stage 1 and 2, titled When in Kyarag. You find it difficult to turn down such hospitality, so why not have some fun for the time being? Let's begin. <clears throat> now that this is settled, the three clans must start listening frequently with uh, liaising with one another. We must further discuss the specifics of the transfer of powers to the Saintus and what powers each family is allowed to keep. However, aside from this, the preparations for the preparations the three of us must make for the ritual are equally important. Therefore, with the upcoming ceremony, I propose we seize the occasion and transfer our powers to the Saintus and at the same time. The ceremony and the transfer of powers are managed by different individuals. As such, both can be conducted at the same time. What's more, the ceremony also calls for the participation of the clan's leaders. What do you think of this idea, if I may ask so? The decision has been made, it will happen in due course. <sighs> this year's ceremony will be a ceremony for the transfer of powers to the Saintus, huh? Guess we have something to look forward to. In that case, I will have my men draft the relevant documents and distribute them across Kerag. I am sure the masses will be rejoiced to learn of this. Wait. Is something the matter? You can't hoodwink your way out of this, Sensiotis. Who will manage the valleys and the mines the next few days? Gnosis was in charge, but you had him fired. Who will take it? You needn't worry, Arctos. I hired an expert from outside Kerag. This expert will conduct a field investigation on the valley and the mines from a disease pre prevention perspective and construct a medical facility within Silver Ash territory. I will put this person in complete control of the two areas. Look at the time, the train should be arriving in Carlin right about now. If you two would like to meet the expert, you need only wait a short moment longer. Enough of this nonsense, 
I have no idea who you hired and what you are planning with this medical charade. However, the so-called expert of yours will stay within my sight at all times. This is my guest you're talking about, Arctus. <clears throat> That's exactly why I unsealed this. You said over... Uh, you said the overmining was Gnosis is doing, and I couldn't care less whether that's the case or not. The way I see it, anyone you hire might as well be another Gnosis. We may be rid of one, but there will be always one more. You want me to leave your men in charge of the place? Fine, but you will have to show me what this expert is capable of. If your expert does well, then not only will they lead... They be your guests, Enziotis. I vow to welcome them with my warmest hospitality as my own guest. Hmm. What's the matter? You were talking so big. Do you really need so much time to think? Is everything... If everything is as you said, what is there to hesitate about? Or do you mean to tell us this person you hired is indeed another Gnosis? Here to do your dirty work again? The Pale Orchards have always been in charge of the Winebear Court security. Now that I've agreed to turn these lands over to the court, I cannot be more reassured with the Pale Orchards looking after them. That said, a word of advice, Arctus. You best be careful. Entertaining this guest of ours will be no walk in the park. Heh, <laughs> not a problem. There are no guests we Pale Orchards cannot entertain let's find out whether this guest is a is as stiff necked as you <clears throat> skewers i need you to look into this guest having me run your errands again i'm not in the mood for your sharp tongue uh. monk 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 here. Get me a car. Of course. Yucatan, go. Please watch your step, madam. Valais, what's your view on all this? I'm afraid I'm not capable enough to see and see what this is intent. I don't blame you, but I certainly didn't expect the, that crafty woman Ratatos to agree to it. I don't get it. It's Matriarch Ratatos. I am sure she has her ideas. <laughs> All I know is that Silver Ash Brad has to be planning something. And he may sound like he has a point, but I will never believe anything he says so easily. The goal of to invite Enciotis' guest over. We'll figure out what to do later. Uh, tell Gulo, sorry. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Man, I didn't expect it to start snowing the moment we got off the train. Doctor, let's wait uh, till it stops before we head to the mountain. Huh. Snowball fight. Who's in? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, that sounds like fun. But we still have a long way to go. We should save our strength. <sighs> it's kind of a pain to get to Carlin right now. I hope the train will take us all the way to the foot of the mountain one day. We may call this the Carlin Railway, but there is actually a stretch of distance from the station to the foot of the mountain where we aren't allowed to build anything. <sighs> Sounds like it's going to be difficult then. There is a lot of resistance in the, in the idea... I'm not too sure about this stuff, but I don't think it's going to be easy. A lot of people here insist on walking every single step of uh, up Mount Carlin, thinking to do otherwise would be unfaithful, but I don't think Kierak Under would mind. We Kierak folk always keep faith in our hearts. How would th uh, taking a train straight to the mountain change any of that? Hmm. Serentiotis has always wanted to have the railway go straight to Carlin. Alas, the lands up ahead belong to the Pale Roaches. Sir Arthas would never let him build any tracks there. Half a year ago, there was even a bit of a tussle between General Gulo of the Pale Roaches and Gnosis. With Gnosis? Oh, right, I haven't heard anything about him for a while. Is he doing okay? He... he was fired because of that scuffle. 
One of the reasons Serencio disinvited the doctor here is because he wants the doctor to fill in his role. Huh. So how come no one told me that? Doctor, did anyone... <clears throat> Um, what's the matter? What are you people? Lady Ancia, get behind me. On Sir Arcas's orders, I am here to extend the Silver Ashes, uh, Silver Ashes guest, the Doctor, an invitation to the Arcas estate. You're bringing all these soldiers along to invite our guests to your place? What kind of sick joke is this? This place belongs to my family, the Silver Ashes. General Gulo, you may work for the Pale Roaches, but I suggest you don't do anything out of line. I see you're here as well, Lady Ancia. You'll have to pardon me for my intrusion. I'll cut to the chase. Doctor is the Silver Ashes guest, and you aren't bringing anyone along on your way home. Not on my watch. Relax, Lady Ancia. Sir Arctos only wanted to invite the esteemed guests to pay your humble abode, to pay our humble abode a visit. As if my brother would agree to something that unreasonable. Not to worry, Lady Ancia. Your brother, Sir Enciodis, has already given us his approval. No way. It's true. Also, Lady Ancia, mention uh, the ownership. Mention the ownership of the land here. This isn't Silver Ash territory anymore. From now on, the land belongs to the Vine Bear Court. C come again? Vice! That's the, what's the meaning of this? First, it's the reason the doctor was invited here. Then it's the ownership of the land. What else are you keeping from me? Sorry, Lady Ancia. Vice, come on, what's happening? Which one of you is a doctor? Uh, that will be me. The one in the hood. Right. It's you. Easy now, if you say so. Don't move, hands off your weapons. Last warning, no funny moves. You don't seem very happy about our arrangement. Know your place, outsider. Sir Arctos gave you an invitation. Most people are never so lucky. <clears throat> You dare act so impudent, knowing that's the esteemed guest who stands before you? Oh, I just remember who that is. <clears throat> I know what was made for, for that one. You hear footsteps accompanied by dull metallic clanking sounds. An impressively tall woman walks towards you. Immediately, everything falls silent. The Kiarak soldiers surrounding you put away their weapons and step aside with timid looks on their faces. She takes a quick glance at all of you, briefly pausing as her gaze lands on the elite operator standing next to you. The moment their eyes meet, they put their hands on their weapons by pure instinct. <clears throat> I assume you will do whatever it takes to get this doctor to pay your visit today. We have our orders, and Sir Enciodis gave us his approval. You shouldn't have a problem with that. Relax, I'm not here for you. <laughs> Lady Encia, Enciodis asked me to escort you home. Tegenbrecher, did my brother really... Correct. I'm here to receive our guest for Enciodis, and I've done that now. And you'll hand me over to these guys right away. That's right. Hmm. Please, go on. Looks like Sir Enciodis is so busy that he doesn't have the time to come fetch the doctor himself. Correct. Put your weapons down. I would rather not offend our guest's bodyguard in any way. It's part of my job to carry a weapon at all times, and you're not my boss. Enough, Sharp. No bloodshed here. 
I'm the doctor's bodyguard. Wherever the doctor goes, I go. My instructions are to invite the doctor and the doctor alone. It's okay, Sharp. You go and stand by somewhere else. If you say so. Doctor, are you seriously going? <clears throat> Don't worry. Don't worry, how am I supposed not to worry? And why are you even going along with uh, what they're saying, Doctor? Golo? You do well to treat our guest better than that. Say, please. Doctor of Rhode Island, please follow us to the Pale Roaches estate. The Black Knight is so well mannered. Oh. Three time champion of the Casimir's Major. <laughs> I'm Justin Ciotis's bodyguard. Give him my regards. I will. Lead the way. <laughs> Looks like I'm working overtime again. Frycum Daily. Extra edition. Breaking news. At the three clan council that has just concluded, the Vine Bear Court and the clans have come to a shocking understanding regarding the Carlin mining question. To resolve the differences between the families and to better drive Kierak's development, the clans have all agreed to turn portions of their authority over to the Saintus, in accordance with the teachings of Kieragandar. Moreover, the clans have all agreed to fully assist the Saintus in her role as the leader in service of leading Kierak toward a better tomorrow. <clears throat> Encia, this... You're home, Encia. You've traveled far, my dear sister. Encia, this... Why? Slow down. Why did you hand the doctor over to the Pale Roaches? I need the doctor to carry some of Gnosis's responsibilities for me. And as you know, the relationship between Carlin Trade and the Pale Roaches has been tense. Arthur's demanded that the Doctor operate under his supervision, and it's a reasonable ask. Then why didn't you tell the Doctor? Not even I knew about this arrangement. It happened after I had the invitation sent out. But still! I know Rhode Island saved you, and I know you think very highly of the Doctor. Trust me, Encia, I think of the Doctor no less highly than you do. If the Doctor comes to harm there, the Pale ro Roaches will pay the price. No, Encia, this, I'm not just a Silver Ash. I'm an employee of Rhode Island. I have a responsibility to ensure the Doctor's safety. Leave that to me. You've grown up, Encia. Let's do this, then. Motherhorn. Sir! Have someone keep an eye on what's going, uh, what's going, ha what's going on over there. As soon as the doctor begins work in the valleys and mines, you may take Encia to see the doctor. Very good, sir. Encia, this. Go, Encia. Rest well. All right. Master, about the doctor. Motherhorn, make sure Encia is safe. I... I will. It's useless, you know. She isn't the kind of girl we can keep inside the house. I'll keep an eye on her. I need you on standby. So be it then. Speaking of which, how much do you know about this doctor of Rhode Island? An excellent scholar of outstanding professionalism who understands the profits that Rhode Island will see from working with me. That the doctor so quickly got to the grasp of the situation and accepted the arrangement shows that I was correct in my assessment. Why do you ask? I don't think this doctor is merely a scholar. Great at sniffing things out, no doubt, and much more so than you expected, too. And besides, this Doctor C sends your regards. Hmm. You think the Doctor foresaw all this? 
I sense not a bit of su surprise under that hood. Not only did the scholar of yours understand the situation completely, there was never even a hint of astonishment, and I must emphasize that. What's more, apparently my reputation precedes me. Looks like our friend came prepared. Trust my intuition, Insilis. I have my eye for people. You might have made yourself an enemy with this movie of yours. An enemy? No, if the intel I gathered and your description are correct, then the doctor will become my dearest friend. Or should I say, I will become the doctor's dearest friend. Sorrentionis, it's time for your meeting. Let's go. <clears throat> What's Nos is doing here? He never showed his face at meetings like this. <laughs> I heard one. I heard the one uh, they hired to clean up his messes is finally here. I bet he couldn't bear with the shame any longer and came to beg the boss for mercy. Haven't you heard? Gnosis' replacement was taken away by the Pale Roaches. The way I see it, he's uh, here to tr uh, try his luck, thinking he's still got a chance. Impossible. There's no chance at all. Gnosis sits still in the conference room. Everyone sits far away from him, but their gossip echoes through the room, clear as day. Gnosis, it's been a while. You've lost weight. Thanks to you, Mr. President. We spent four years in Victoria together. It pains me to see things turn out this way. And see what is, you've thrown me under the bus already. Let's skip the pleasantries. Gnosis, you prick. Don't you know who you're talking to? If it wasn't for your friendship with the President, you wouldn't even be allowed to sit here, here now uh, that you're sacked. I don't remember needing anyone's permission to stand here. How dare you! Gnosis, there is no doubt the Bacarlan trade owes much to you for its establishment and growth. However, whatever you have a right to be here or not, that is not for you to say. Uncle Chester, please. Very well. First, regarding the sentencing of Carlin Trade's former Chief Technical Officer Gnosis Edelweiss, there is no doubt that the expansion of the valleys and mines under Gnosis Edelweiss's management has brought the company tremendous profit. But on the other hand, the rapid expansion strategy and the secret mining of Carlin has brought the company under the repeated scrutiny of the Three Clan, three clan Council. In particular, when the other clans asked to participate in the Valley's investigation, Gnosis planned to ambush the two clans' inspection team. This has severely damaged Carlin Trade's image and the Silver Ashes standing in the Three Clan Council. Therefore, President Ciotis has decided that, effective today, Gnosis Edelweiss will be formally terminated as a Carlin Trade employee. So that's why you had me come. You wanted to read all these criticisms you have for me out loud in front of everyone. Your actions have brought harm to Carlin Trade profits. This is how I answer our stakeholders. I hope you can understand. Very well, Enciodus. I would never have imagined all these years ago when I came to Kierak to build this place up with you, that this is how it would all end. I am sure you and I agree that it's far more important to do what's responsible and beneficial than look back on all, on all times. That said, I believe you, your lab, you are free to keep using it as you, uh, as any sensitive Carlin trade data has been removed. I could also arrange for you to join a caravan heading to Victoria, if that's what you prefer. I have to answer to all of the stakeholders here. Likewise, I have to give you an answer. If you think what you are doing is re reasonable, then I feel nothing but disappointment in you. Carlin Trade yet needs my technology, and Kerak's industrial sector has not come to too far that it can progress without important importing core technologies from the outside world. Your prom you promised me a suitable large stage and backed my research so that we can break new ground in these promising snowlands for the welfare of the people of Kerag. 
In the end, this is where my stage is, and I am being thrown under the bus for the company. I still approve of your achievements in academic research, Gnosis. This is why, more so than anyone, I am hoping that you could reflect on what you have done. You should never have let the things out of my control. Hm. Are you sh so weak now that you, you're you scared of letting anyone out of your iron grip? If that doesn't op if that doesn't open my eyes. A loud bang reverberates throughout the room. Gnosis slams the conference room's doors shut, with enough force that the guest a gust of wind sends paper flying through the air. Shocking shocked by the sudden thunderclap, the spectators all instinctively look towards the source of the sound before casting their heads down under the invisible pressure. No one knows just what expression Enciodis holds at this moment. Let's continue, Chester. As requested by Sir Arctos, the leader of Rhode Island, the Doctor will be in charge of the transfer of the valleys and mines under the protection of the Pale Roaches. We will formally introduce the Doctor to everyone the company once all the tasks, had, uh, t tasks at hand are complete. On to our next topic, the meeting of uh, the meat of our meeting today. The preliminary discussions of how to part uh, partition the company's power and hand it over to the Saintus. First off, on the matter of tariffs. <clears throat> what do I call you, outsider? Call me Doctor. Doctor. Sounds just like these scholars over at the academy. Doctor, do you know do you know why you're here? I don't. Hmm. <laughs> and Ciotas wanted you to take Gnosis's place, but I don't trust these people. That's why I'm keeping my eye on you. Hmm. I didn't know that was part of my job description. Sir, I'm pretty sure we got a smarters playing dumb here. <laughs> you're Enciodus' guest. Even if you really don't know a thing, you're still Enciodus' people. Balais, tell our guest the deal. Sir Enciodus has decided to transfer the valley and the mines to the Winebear Court. The man who was in charge of the mines and the factory was his subordinate, Gnosis. And ever since Gnosis was dismissed, the coordinator uh, position has been left vacant. According to Sir Enciodis, you are his replacement. Hmm, I see. <clears throat> Looks like you have a clear understanding of the situation now. Until I am sure that Enciodis isn't making any funny moves in the mines and the valleys, you aren't leaving his place. Don't you even, even uh, this place? You, don't you even think about pulling your tricks yourself? My men don't care about etiquette nearly as much as Enciodis' people. If they want your head, there is nothing I can do to stop them. Heh, <laughs> boss, look at this squirt. I wouldn't know where to chop if I were to try my blade on this midget. <laughs> hmm, shut up, all of you. I'm not going to make things too hard for you, the outsider. In the end, you're Antiotis' guest. As long as you play along, we won't do anything to you. Am I making myself clear? I'm not worried. All of you look like reasonable people to me. Enough, Valais. Show our guest to the bedroom. Very good, sir. Oh. <clears throat> Anya, I'm coming in. <clears throat> I knew it, you're still sleeping. Enya, Enya, rise and shine. Uh, uh, morn. After a brief fuss, Enya gets dressed and sits in front of her dressing table. Kiar naturally stands behind her and combs her hair. <sighs> What's the matter now? You know, isn't it a good thing to become leader of the three clans? 
You always say that in the Vine Bear Court your role is simply to keep the masses calm, and most of the time it's actually the Great Elder who calls the shots. This is an opportunity. I wouldn't be so worried if it hadn't been Arctos or even Ratatos who brought up the idea. But it was Enciodas who made that proposal. Perhaps the guilt suddenly got into him. I sure hope so. But if you're so worried about this, couldn't you have turned it down? Didn't you agree to it without thinking twice? <sighs> That's because there wasn't a point to dragging it out. No one had any grounds to object. It doesn't matter whether he really wants me to be Kerak's leader. There wasn't anyone who would reject the proposal that he that then and there. And if we had set the issue aside, more people would have found out. You told me that the masses have gotten used to the peace, just like they've gotten used to the endless snow on the mountains. The people of Kierak wish to wish for peace first and foremost, and they gra gravitated towards those who can bring them peace. Right, peace. Whether it's the peace that Enciodas brought them or the peace that the Vine Bear Court brought. That's why, even if I turned down the offer, pe the people would have asked me to accept. So I might as well take the initiative myself before the Great Elder makes all the arrangements. You think Enciodas foresaw that? He made a proposal that no one could refuse under normal circumstances. He would have been the last person to suggest this. I am sure both Arctos and Ratatos thought the same thing. I can see why Arctos went along with it, but Ratatos... Uh, she was never the kind of person to give, give up so easily. What a headache. I really hope Kiaragandr will hear my prayers and teach the Great Elder and the three clan leaders a good lesson. <laughs> Perhaps she has already heard of your prayers, and it just isn't time yet. Do you want her to take care of Enteotis too? For him, as cruel as possible. <laughs> now let's put this necklace on. And we're done. Hmm. <laughs> right, would you give this letter and scarf to Encia? Also, ask her to carry come pay the mountain a visit, right? You know me well. <laughs> Also, send the word out that I'll be analyzing scriptures today, and I don't want to be disturbed. I... I need some time to think. Of course. After Kiara leaves the room, Enya opens her drawer to see an exquisitely decorated vase, holding an eye-catching, elegant rock. Oh, Kiragander, please guide me. What should I do? We no longer live in times where isolation is enough to keep ourselves out of the affairs around us. In the past hundred years ago, there have been countless exchanges of conflicts between nations. Colombia rose quickly in a conflict, while Gaul a powerful country was also wiped out in a conflict. All the world's nations are slowly changing in these times separated by the catastrophes. Refusing relations with others is no longer an option. Kerak cannot continue to lock itself away on these snowy mountains. Keragandr's protection, if Keragandr really exists in the first place, can bring the snow realm this far. If we are to go any further, Kerak must grow stronger than ever before. The millennium of peace and quiet has reached its end, and we cannot wait for others to open the door for us. Kerak needs to make contact with the outside world. We must take that step forward, while we still have control. That's the Silver Ash tradition. Kerak must remain Kerak. We still have a chance, but time grows short for snowy mountains. I have seen our world. I have to make a difference. Everything I've witnessed needs to have meaning. <clears throat> so, you are Gnosis. That's right. Do you know who I am? 
Skirius Browntail, sister of the Browntail clan, matriarch Ra Ratatus Browntail. You know that, and you have the balls to forgo a salute. Why must I salute someone who I have nothing to do with? You! Don't you know your manners? If we must talk manners, you should work on your first Skirius brown tail. I heard all your commotion outside the door. What's more, when nobles meet, they must each first curtsy to each other with a carlin bow. If you show up here without affording me any curtsy, why should I show you any? J just how outdated is your idea of etiquette? Etiquette never dies. It only is slowly forgot. It's only slowly forgotten. As a noble, you should feel sorrow in that. The Edelweiss have long been in charge of the management of Kierak's texts and records. I admire your knowledge of Kierak etiquette, Mr. Nilsis. Still, though, I'm afraid Madame Skirius isn't here to discuss Kierak etiquette. Could we please move on to the main topic? Very well, I'm curious. Considering Ratatos refused my capitu capitulation, why is she now reaching out to me? Do you have to ask? It's because you, Master, proposed handing his powers over to the Saintess and the Three Clan Council. I see. In that case, go home and tell Ratatos. Now that the things have come to this, I am likely not the only one who will cooperate. Give him the right amount of si uh, sincerity. Per Sir Arctus's orders, please stay here while you are not attending to your duties. If you need to head outside, we will serve as your bodyguards. Kierak may be a safe place, but we cannot guarantee no one will take the chance to cause trouble. You will be served the finest delicacies that Kierak has to offer. You may also use anything here as you see fit. All your daily needs will be met during your stay with us. If I require anything, please let the servants know. You may also have... Uh, them relay anything to me. Very well, I look forward to dinner. <sighs> Keeping an eye on me whenever I head out, huh? A rip of the consultation and the grand ceremony are those the only means my brother is inviting me to the Snow Realm? Oh, the grand uh, ceremony takes place annually in Kierak. It's the biggest, uh, it's the biggest event, and the most important thing to the Kierak people. On that day, everyone in Kierak stops uh, what they're doing and offers Kierak under the goddess of our mountains our most sincere prayers. We pay for a happy, we pray for a happy, peaceful y year under our mountain goddess's protection. As for the Ripafi problem, Kierak didn't have any infected in the past. So most of us didn't know much about Ripathy. In the Snow Realms, Ripathy is far from the greatest threat we face. But ever since uh, my brother got the mountains connected by railway, we've been getting more and more visitors, and life has also gotten much better. Thanks to that, everyone's, everyone's starting to learn more and more about the Infected and Ripathy. I guess Ripathy is stepping into the limelight since there are no other pressing issues. Kierak still doesn't have any professional means to test for Ripathy, let alone helping the infected get settled and uh, get treatment. Given the situation, you might be the best consultant they can get. Doctor, are you going to accept the invitation? Hmm. Do you want me to? Huh? Um. <laughs> Personally, I really want you to go. My uh, parents died in an accident when I was still, when I was still a kid. And after they died, my brother and Siodas took over their business to support the family. He kept us afloat all by himself until I came out uh, of age. Then, to ensure our family's future, he left Kierak to study in Victoria. Our family has already, uh, was already on pretty shaky ground before he left Kierak, and that was around when he started getting more and more headstrong. But at least we all still got along well as siblings. But things have changed since he came back and started Colin trade. Both my brother and sister treated me very well, but for some reason the two of them started talking less and their relationship soured. Five years ago, 
When the last saintess passed away, my sister joined the trials and became the new Kierak saintess. She's rarely le left Mount Collins since, and I haven't had a lot of chances to see her. <sighs> we only write to each other now. And ever since she became a saintess, it feels like my brother's uh, often at odds with her. I may be very good at mountain climbing, but I wouldn't know where to start to mend relationships. But you're really amazing, Doctor. Uh, you get along with everyone, and you've solved a lot of problems for people. That's why I was thinking that... Uh, if we ever get a chance, maybe you could help me come up with an idea? But... But? Doctor, I guess this, this might seem weird coming from me. But I know my brother better than anyone else. He's amazing. But he's the kind of person who doesn't mind doing whatever it takes to achieve my, his goals. I'm actually a little worried that you'll end up becoming a pawn in his game. If you go. So that's why it's okay if you don't want to. If you don't want to. I'll bear with it for now. That's why I told you you should have gotten out while you still could. Look at you now. You're caught. Are you the one who was talking to me at the market? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what should I call you? Call me Kiera. I changed my mind. I want to be friends with you. Would you like to be friends with me? Hmm. Why don't you tell me what this talking rock is all about first? Hmm. That's classified information. Well, I don't really have so much time to keep bothering you if you really don't want to talk. But it's not so bad to have somebody talk to, don't you think? Okay, and for the final part for today, <clears throat> the story on stage 2, titled Smoothing Things Over. <clears throat> Lara, you were a lovely one to, to your family, helping with work the second year back. No, I'm just doing what I should. I'd love to take a good look around, too. Ah, it really does change once you study outside. Far better head on you than my little brother. What a wonderful girl you are. Shame. Who knows if I'll ever find out, uh, find one as nice as you again after I move. Wait, Sasa, you're... You've been living he fine here all this time, right? Why the move? My dad, you know, yesterday at the Three Clan Council, they announced the Saintess would lead the tree, would lead the tree, right? Now that's all fired up. Oh, Uncle Zor was always against Sir Antiotis' open door policy. Right, we all moved here from up north back, back then, so my brother and I could get work. And here, Dad pretty much got used to it over the over the years. And now they announced the resignation yesterday, and he's over the moons. At dinner last night, he was going on and on, mad at Sir Antiotis for everything he'd done these years, and I was fed up hearing it. I even had an argument with him. But he can't change his mind in the end. We ended up moving straight back to the Pale Roach's territory. So what about your brother's job? Who knows? Once the resignation's, resi uh, resignation's through, it's up to uh, up in the air if Turicum can still do business like before. I heard the Pale Roaches say, See, in the first place, it was the Saintess uh, last council who wanted Serenciodis handing the valleys and mines over. If she's going to govern Kerak, Serenciodis probably isn't going, uh, isn't getting any favors. <laughs> That's true. It's a good thing too, though. You might have missed it, being uh, outside so long, but the three clans got along fine at first, it's just lately they've fallen out more and more with each other. A lot of people were scared after last council uh, we'd get into a full-blown war. Yeah, it's amazing how Serenciotis uh, yielded on this, and he's putting power with the Saintus. Yeah, just... It should have happened long ago if you ask me. I don't hate his open-door policy, seeing as our family made a good living from it too. 
but sometimes it really does feel like the old people say how Kiarak's not like Kiarak anymore. Him deciding to give away uh, now and make less of a fuss, everyone proves of that. It's just all grumps like your big brother against it. My brother. <coughs> I'm back. Oh, you silly kid. Told you to relax once you got home, but you just had to work. You and I are... You... You and your... Oripathy thing. You might not feel bad about your health, but we still hurt over it. Over it. It's alright, sis. A bit of work like this uh, won't get in the way. Um, where's Bro? He said he was heading to the factory just now and went out all in a hurry. Said he wouldn't be back today either. The factory? Is that the captain? Captain, is something up? Vacation's over, Aurora. The doctor got napped at the state of the Pale Roach's Pale Roach family yesterday. Uh, huh? The doctor went with them voluntarily. You should get what uh, you should get what I mean. Likely some sort of plan taking under that hood. I took a rough look at the map. Take some time from the station to the Pale Roaches. The doctor should have gotten there by now, and we ought to be on our way. I'm using the pretext to head to yours uh, now to check the situation. Then I'll <clears throat> then I'll come out and converge with you. Got it. <clears throat> mm. I guess I'll go rendezvous with the captain then. I see, so you're the one from Rhode Island. Hmm, you didn't pick me out on purpose. Correct. You're very unique, but I don't know why it is you you're so unique. Back at the market, what did you mean? Hmm? It was no more than a word of advice. You see? Aren't you under the watch of a group of strangers, unfree to even stroll outside? What do you know? Before I answer your question, tell me first, for what reason did you come to Kiarak? Uh, to, uh, to help Clifford link up with her siblings. Mending the three Silver Ashes relations? You speak some hefty words. I am very curious how I, outsiders like you regard this land of Kiarak. Hmm. The people are faithful here. In the end, their belief in Kiaragandra is the root of what condenses the people in this land together. But at times, I felt the people are somewhat too dependent on belief. Can you sympathize? You tell every word you have to the divine, hoping you'll come. But they'll come to help solve things, and so you turn. Though so clearly, you should use your own willpower to change circumstances. You just take divine with divine will as an excuse to stagnate. Though so clearly, you till, uh, you till by your own hands to gain your harvest. You still thank the divine for their generosity after the fact. Though so clearly, making the choices, putting in the effort should be. Uh, for each person's own. The way you see it, should Kierak change? Hmm. I don't know this place well enough yet. How cautious. But I don't mind the cautious at all. It's just a shame. You probably have little time left to learn how this present country, uh, country manifests. So, what do you know? I... I have a friend. This friend has been thinking all this time about how to finally change Kierak for the better. However, she's thought for a long time and can't come up with an answer. She's gradually realized that everything, uh, everyone thinks different of her, and their mindsets, no matter who they are, all disturb her. 
She wants to do something, but every time she wants to, there's always someone advising against her. And now she finds she's become slowly unable to stop what, uh, what those people wish to do. And it's in this moment you've arrived. You think this is some sort of omen? Omen? Hmm. Perhaps any port in a storm is a more fitting description. An invitee of Enciodas come from the outer lands. The spectrum and scent of you give me an otherly feeling, peculiar and novel. Tell me, stranger, what does your arrival portend? Hmm. Come to mention it. Maybe you can do me a favor. Ow, sorry. Encia, I hope this letter finds you well. I hear you've come back to Kierag. I'm, I'm very, very happy for that. Though I can't descend the mountain to... Oh. <clears throat> Though I can't descend the mountain to meet you, getting word that you were safe and healthy delighted me more than anything. I also hear that the people helping to treat your Euripathy came to Kierag with you. If I have the chance, I'd love to express my thanks to them. For saving my sister, my dearest, the blessings of Kiragander. They deserve the blessings of Kiragander. Remember to greet your neighbors and tell them you've, you're sound. Be early to bed and early to wake. And don't forget to pray twice for Kiragander, to Kiragander every day. Also, you're not allowed to climb any mountains. Alright, I think you're probably fed up of your sister uh, going on, so I'll stop nagging you here. May you enjoy your time back home, Encia. I'll pray before Kiragander for blessings upon you. P.S. If you can write a letter back to me, that would be all the better. Come on! I only got here last. Uh, I only got her last letter not long ago. Seriously, it's like she hasn't written in forever. She's on my case like this every time. Thank you, Kiar. You're always the one handing me my sister's letters. It's all right, the great saint is condescend at will, so I go out and about in her place and bring back outsiders' news to her. It's as she desires, too. Sorry, though, I've got no room to write a letter back now. Uh, I'm about to get ready for something else. Based on the bag next to you, you're going to head outdoors. Where are you going? To climb Jungfrau? Come on, I forgot until you mentioned it. I still haven't conquered Jungfrau. But where I'm going is to the valleys uh, this, this time. The valleys? Aren't they about to be handed over to the Weinbeer court? And there's so many factories there too. What are you going to do? The doctor is uh, the doctor is gonna head there, which means I have someone, uh, someone to see. Oh, Kiar, you have no idea who I'm talking about, do you? Oh, I do believe I've heard the, t uh, the tell. The guess take taken away by the pale roaches. Mm -hmm. My guess is uh, uh, in the first place... My guess in the first place co uh, concern for the doc... Is this a type of... Or is my brain just firing off in the wrong direction? My guess in the first place... Uh, all right. Concern for the doctor's safety is really waiting on me. You're such a good girl. But take care. I hear things haven't been too calm there lately. <laughs> Lady Encia, we can depart now. Worry not, all responsibilities will lie uh, with me on this departure. You're a huge help, uncle. It's rare you ask me to help you with things. How would I ever refuse this? Kiar, I might be gone for a little, uh, long while. If you can, go back and tell my sister I'll reply to her after I'm done. It's quite alright, I can wait. <coughs> Aurora, I need, I need info to make judgement calls, especially your views as a local. Tell me how you see the Doctor's current situation. Gnosis was likely in a very sensitive position, given he was formerly in charge of the mines and valleys. 
Servant Yod is putting the doctor in that same position now is bound to draw Arctos's attention. Tell me in detail about why the mines and valleys are such a sensitive area. Hmm, it'd be more convenient if we had a map on hand. <clears throat> Karak's topo topography isn't too complicated and it's not very finely partitioned either. Usually, us locals just call each other, uh, us locals just call each area the mines, valleys, woodlands, lakes, mountains, creeks, and plains. The creeks and plains and most of the lakes are the pale roaches in the north. The brown tails in the west are mainly the woodlands and the minority of the, uh, minority of the lakes. The silver ashes are mainly the are mainly the mountains, valleys, and mines. They have so little of the lakes you can essentially ignore it. And the valleys and mines actually they represent the nearly half of the silver ashes territory already. Between them, the mines have always been incredibly important land to the silver ashes because. Practically all the ore used in Kerak comes from there, while the valleys were only developed in recent years. Originally they were extremely poor land to work and there weren't more than a few hamlets. Uh, people always considered it an area with no use. But after Senator Enciodis found the Carlin trade, he chose that land to use for siting factories. The majority of Carlin trade's manufacturing is built there. And it's extremely close to Mount Carlin too. On top of that, I exchanged some info with Kierak merchants before we left, but everyone who comes outside to do business is related to Carlin trade in some way. A month ago, with the great Saintus backing, uh, Saintus's backing, the Brown Tails and Pale Roaches requested an organized, an organized team to investigate health and safety issues at the factories. But the team met a surprise attack secretly ordered by Gnosis, who wouldn't pay, uh, play along with it. I don't know how that info came out, but everyone believes Gnosis was involved in it. That led to the Pale Roses' head, Arctos getting insp inspiration from the Vinebear Court to send troops to station in the valleys, and it's because of the consequences of Gnosis' extreme actions that he was finally removed. At the meeting, the doctor mentioned Enziodas' reason for making the invitation. We do help construct a rip of the related facilities for call and trade, but he never mentioned having the doctor manage anything in, the, in his place before. Which is to say, the doctor actively climbed onto the scales of this conspiracy. Very doctor-like to do. That seems, that seems likely, but call and trade and Rhode Island have a perfectly fine relationship and the Doctor would probably only accept because of that relationship. <sighs> For now, I can't imagine the reason why Serenciotis would want to set up the Doctor. What do we do now? Doctor, uh, Contact Doctor Kaltzit. The landship, landship settled for Victoria. We need to use... Uh, we need the use of a local large-scale comm station, because our handheld equipment's got no way to get in touch. Uh Captain? I serve it for a stretch. Guard uh, force at the doctor's present location is low strength. The Pale Horse's residence should have about 200 guards, tra training and arms not up to outside army strength. Standard. We can break through on a surprise raid. I've checked surrounding terrain too, although pl plan is we infiltrate. Ultimate plan is we'll infiltrate, but that means setting up explosives in multiple locations beforehand. Going in and pulling both uh, out both needed manufactured explosives to draw attention. There's some point in the wall structure that'll let. Wait, ca Captain? Mm hmm. I feel like things aren't going to get to that point. No matter what happens, we need to ensure the doctor's safety. That's our first priority. I agree with that, but if we bring force against the House of Pale Roach in the run-up to the Grand Ceremony, then I'm worried Rhode Island will end up uh, an enemy of Mount Carlin. What will the Kerak operators at Rhode Island do? I need to consider the worst-case scenario and the least honorable way of sol solving things. The present outlook is pessimistic, and if I have to make a choice, you know I'll only choose the Doctor. 
We all hope things won't go that far, but you know as well as I that it doesn't depend on us, and I have a responsibility to the doctor in Rhode Island. I just can't shake the sense that Sorrentiotis probably has its own plans. The doctor chose to play them at their own game, so some kind of clue must have been there long ago, and the doctor's already prepared to deal with it. I've never doubted the doctor's abilities for a moment, I believe. But I need to make my own preparations beforehand. The doctor put me on standby, so there is a place for us in the plan. We need to get in touch with the doctor first. Aurora? Hmm? You respect Enciotis a lot. Yes, without him, I would have never been able to leave Kierag and come into contact with the outside world. Understandable. But for the moment, I want you to forget that. Starting now, you treat him as a hypothetical enemy. Can you do that? If you feel like you can't, you can head back right now. I won't blame you. But at the same time, I'm an employee of Rhode Island too. Remember what you just said. Understood. But do we have to watch out for Cliffhart and the rest too? I trust Cliffhart, but have no confidence in Nancy Silverash. For now, we figure how to meet up with the doctor. <clears throat> You're the doctor's subordinates. <clears throat> In an instant, the hardened steel blade streaks through the air, stopping just a hair's width from the woman's neck. Wow, that's a rare way to use a sword here. Who are you? Well, there's no need to be this voracious to an ordinary girl you just met. Winning this winning this position and cracking a joke in this context, does that make you an ordinary girl? Putting the blade put the blade down first. Your Rhode Island uh, your Rhode Island doctor sent me. I was asked to bring you a message. And for part number two <clears throat> well, well, you actually came to us, Brown Tail's territory, for a visit all by your lonesome. You got Paul's Gnosis Edelweiss. I've always been upright and honorable. <laughs> That's rich coming from you after you've kicked out the current trade for your shady business. I thought I'd see Ratitos here. Anyone could bluff like that. Ratitos wasn't going to just take your word so easily. As I said before, it takes two to cooperate. It seems my words have reached her, and that's more than enough for me. <laughs> Talk all you want. So, since you came here all by yourself, you said last time things have come to this. What's that all about? What things have come to what? <sighs> Why do you think Enziotis proposed this transfer of power? <laughs> Isn't that because he can't take on both the Pale Roaches and us, and so he figured to compromise? Compromise? <laughs> compromise. Think again, Madam Scurious. I dare say that your sister thinks otherwise. Even ever since Enciodes came back to Kierag, was there any single thing he did that wasn't in pursuit of his ultimate victory? Is in his uh, is his proposal to put the saintess back in power really compromise hmm. here's a hint the ceremony hmm what about the ceremony don't tell me he's going to throw a fit there and refuse to throw uh, to turn over his power the ceremony is nigh and there will be more trains coming in and out of the silver ashes territory transporting both resources and people Take a guess why did Enciodes himself propose to hand the Saintess's powers, even arranging for it to happen on the day of the ceremony. Arcos is a short-sighted man. He thinks Enciodes will pull some kind of dirty trick once he is in control. And so he reassign reassigned his men to guard the valleys and the mines, even to keep an eye on the doctor that Enciodes invited. But the funny thing is that he doesn't know it's all pointless. Huh? Scurious looks to a corner of the room for a brief moment. There is nothing there, but Gnosis notices, notices it. 
Noses look straight at the wall there. Ratatos, you can't be that stupid. I will tell you what Enciodus is planning. But you better see me yourself next time. Even if I have to see his see, schemes come to fruition in you too imprisoned, I won't allow myself to be made a fool again. Now, excuse me. Ratatos? Hey, Ratatos, I know you're here. Pipe down, Skirius. There is a rumbling noise and the wallboard slowly moves to the side. Ratatos, sitting inside, slowly rises and steps out. You believe in what he said? Maybe I should say I'm shocked that you never considered that possibility, sister. But even the synthesis is on our side now. Can Theodos really uh, be so unscrupulous that he... That he? Don't be silly, Skirius. From the moment he first trampled our faith, when he laid his train tracks straight to Kerak and broke away from the Saintus. No, ever since he so calmly agreed to let his sister become the Saintus in exchange for his seat in the Three Clan Council, he hasn't, he hasn't cared. We all know how well their siblings get along in their early years. I also once thought that letting the devout Enya become the Vinebear Court's hostage was a brilliant move. But now? <laughs> I would be surprised if he one day uh, brought his men up the mountain to burn down the whole Vinebear Court. Don't tell me Enziotis is really going to use force. Slow down, sister. There is another possibility. He could be pulling our leg. Why? To make us think he's up to something shady, so we end up making the first move. What good does that do him? If he's not trying to have somebody else take, uh, do his dirty work and off his enemies, he's trying to find an excuse to start a war and earn himself some clout in the end. <laughs> Whatever it is, we're probably all in trouble. Well, how do we figure this out? No idea. Not at all. I'm not exactly omnis omniscient here. But if he's lying, there's got to be holes. You. Your orders, Matriarch. Think of anything you can find on Gnosis. We looked into him before, but he's had lots of dealings since his job got handed off. There should be a lot of clues now. Start there. Understood. You better not disappoint me, Gnosis, otherwise. Ratatos, if he was telling the truth, would you really take him in? Why not? He's an Edelweiss, the family who got Enziotis' fam father killed 15 years ago. So what? They betrayed the Silver Ashes, but when Enziotis came back from studying in Victoria, this guy tagged along, wanting a slice of the pie. If you ask me, he's the type who doesn't give two licks about loyalty, only profit and success. Now that he's made an enemy of his master, he's got to find a new sugar daddy to get his revenge. Right, that's the most obvious reason. So you... Skurus, the Silver Ashes control the gates, the Pale Roaches have their rich farmlands and their army, and the Brown Tails have nothing. Why do you think we stand as one of the Kerak's three families? Because we... what we do earns the highest return. I learned Grandpa's lessons just as well as you did. Right, since I'm letting you in, there's, there are lots of things that you really must spend some time pondering. As a child of the Brown Tails, I, in times like these, you need to know the best course of action. It's more than you, uh, than just knowing the risks of dealing with a criminal. You need to learn to ass assess all this yourself. Profit always comes with risks. You need to learn how to mitigate these risks. Just. Uh, shutting them out along with the prophets, dear sister. Our biggest worry is that everything we just said was true, but also part of a lie. Another thing, you've gotten really close with that servant of yours, haven't you? You mean monk? Monk, conch, conch, whatever. Don't trust anyone too much, sister. <sighs> I don't need you to tell me what to do. 
I'll show you how much stronger I can make the brown tails without you. <sighs> I should never have given NCO this, this chance. I have that brain that moron Arctus to thank. Take any away from her scumbag brother? Don't make me laugh. Whatever. Yucatan? Yes, matriarch? Let the payload just know that I'll visit in a few days. Of course. <clears throat> Doctor, we've entered the valley. Oh, my butt hurts. It does hurt in real life right now as well. Two hours of sitting still. <clears throat> Sorry, Sir Arctos never permitted any rail tracks to be put in the Pale Roaches territory, and it's not in our habit to use cars. I suppose it may not be easy for a foreigner to like you to ride a burning beast. Do Doctor, welcome. I am Sir Enciodus' secretary, Chester. Please allow me to accompany you as you survey the area. To give Sir Arctos the absolute peace of mind, we'll ask you to inspect each and every factory and mine side. So uh, mindset before they're declared closed. Once you have checked everything here, both Sir Arctos and the Great Elder will give their approval. Only then will the transfer be considered complete. What do you think, General Balais? That would be for the best, of course. In that case, please follow me. We'll take, uh, we'll take stroll and get a grasp of the environment and situation here. Still, this is just way too sudden. Right, I heard that there was bad news from the last week the clan council, but that's not enough to send us running. My son was hurt while working in the factory not too long ago. I'm still waiting for his medical subsidy. We, we've we always believed in Sir Enciodas. He's not going to abandon us, is he? All of us put in so much work to improve the Kierak li livelihood. He can't just shut down the factory down like that. What about in what about infected like us? We finally found uh, work at the factory. Please, everyone, calm down. Listen to me. Oh, nice timing, Doctor. Courier. It's been a while. I'm really sorry that we dragged you into our local affairs. Please bear with it for a long, uh, little longer. Once our ceremony is over, the silver ashes will properly receive you. But before that, I think I might need your help with something. You want me to help calm these people down? Hmm. Sharp as always, Doctor. Looks like you're doing well yourself. Don't be so humble, Doctor. Your abilities are on another level. I've seen them for myself. And we'll need your help with many other things as well. Well then, I'll need to borrow the Doctor for uh, this job of mine. Just for a bit. Would the Pale Roaches mind? By all means. Friends and countrymen, Sir Enciodas has personally instructed me to offer all those infected an explanation on his behalf. It so happens that the doctor is here too. The doctor is Sir Enciodas' esteemed guest and Carlin Trade's current chief of technical, of technical officer. Today, together with all of you, our guest will bear witness to this message. <clears throat> At the three clan council, the great houses and the vine bear court reached an understanding for the interim and will begin discussions on any follow-up matters. Because of the grave mistakes made by the Gnosis, the previous CTO, Carlin Trade must shut down all of its factories in a show of goodwill. Once the transfer of powers is complete, the Silver Ash family will actually work with the Vine Bear Court and advocate for a gradual reopening of some of our factories in a controlled, careful, pla carefully planned manner. Hmm. Uh... Please, trust me and trust the Silver Ash family that this is for the best. Now, as I introduced earlier, and will emphasize once more, this is Sir Enciodas' esteemed guest as well as Carlin Trade's current CTO. Our guest is a master not only of the production and mining technologies that we were all familiar with, but also the prevention and treatment of oripathy. The doctor will likewise represent a medical organization that will help Carlin Trade answer the critical question that we are all struggling with, including the medical support issue we were just discussing. Such things would not be possible in our mountains of yore, and together with the doctor, Colin Trade will bring about the new future. 
Yes, I'm nodding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the same time, it is Sir Antiodas' wish for the ter uh, territorial subjects of the other two houses to cast aside their differences and help us build Kierag. There is no need for panic. Please put your faith in Sir Antiodas and the, Siltis and the Saintis. Have faith that Kiaragunder will never abandon her children. Ah, by Kiaragunder. By Kiaragunder. By Kiaragunder. Now then, I will... Wait, hold on a minute. After hearing you out, I, I have something to say. Please. It's not that we don't trust the other two houses. It's just we are really hard uh, headed with uh, headed fairly nice the last couple years thanks to Sir Siodis. We have work, we get our food to eat, and we even get painkillers. We never uh, had it so easy before. Since we heard the factory was going to be shut down, we've all been worried that, uh, that the good times are coming to an end. Please, rest assured, the doctor, as I introduced just now, is an Oripathy scholar. Carl and Trade invited the doctor here precisely because we are concerned about the infected workforce livelihood. So please, put your faith in us, Carl and Trade. Uh, one moment. Uh, yes, is there something you would like to add, Doctor? Uh, trust alone isn't going to keep anyone fed. Ugh. So merciless, Doctor. Friends, it's true. I am not done yet. We didn't keep our internal affairs in check, and that led to your losing your jobs. That is entirely our fault. Carl and Trade promises to keep your... Uh, original positions un unfilled, you will continue to, do, to be compensated and we will arrange job opportunities with equal or even greater pay and benefits. And I am sure you can already tell that, unlike Gnosis, the doctor actually understands what you truly need. The doctor will bring Carl and trade the technologies that will truly benefit our day-to-day -day lives. Right, this is what Sir Enciodes truly wanted all of us to know. Sounds great, I'll head back and tell everybody I know. Good, that's very good. But don't forget Kiragandra's teachings, young man. Phew. Good work. Not at all, it's my job to speak for him. Is that the help you wanted? Thank you, Doctor. But I'm sure he'll agree that this was worth helping. Okay, I will take my leave now. A uh, courier? Yes. Uh, Mr. Anciotis will be pleased. Hmm. I'm not... I'm not sure what you're talking about, Doctor. Requirements have been met just as Madame Scurious expected. NCO has sent advice, presumably as some kind of insurance policy, but that's not nearly enough. You are to ensure that things go according to Madame Scurious's plans once Vice is gone. Yes. You were followed. What? I didn't. There was only. There was only one of them, now long gone, running after the man Scary is assigned to you. I am very sorry for betraying your expectations, Sir Gnosis. No, perhaps this is for the better. I am prepared to be your pawn and do whatever you say. I am just a researcher, monk. Pawns are meaningless to me. What I want is a partner that I can work with. Hm. Do the plan, don't worry. Ratatos and Skirius won't catch you. Understood. All right, this marks the end of today's recording, and brrr, this is a long part. Oh my god. They really packed this thing with story, didn't they? Uh, but anyway, I hope everyone had a blast. I. Need to rest my vocal cords right now, and I need some tea, so I will excuse myself. But in the meantime, thank you all for watching. This has been Jacob, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.